How's it going everybody? Steve from Broken Galaxy here with a bit of something different. Uh, not too long ago, I did a video highlighting some recent toy hunting pickups I did when I was out shopping around at different toy stores in my area and I figured I'd do the same with some vinyl pickups. Uh, typically, I get way more vinyl in a given period of time than I do toys. But with everything being shut down last year, I really don't like buying my vinyl online unless I absolutely have to. It just kind of wasn't an option. So I actually didn't really pick up much last year. It was probably the least amount I've gotten in a given year since I started collecting vinyl. So to kind of give a little bit of a backstory with me and picking up vinyl, I bought my first record when I was 16. So I have been collecting for over 15 years at this point, something like that. I'm in my early 30s. Uh, I'm not good at math either. Definitely wasn't very fast early on. I actually bought my first few records before I even had a turntable. Music has always been super important to me. Uh, music was also very important to my dad, was, he still, still is. And he bought me my first turntable, I believe later that year, or could have even been the following year, uh, for my birthday. And that's when I really started kind of picking stuff up. And then obviously as I got a little bit older, started having some disposable income with, you know, working real jobs. And then it kind of really ballooned up. And I've got these two Ikea Calyx shelves behind me that you can see. I, I apologize for the whole back being a mess. Um, we're in the process of actually next week, this whole area is going to be completely reorganized. I will no longer have this behind me. I will actually be facing that wall instead. Uh, but I have these two Ikea Calyx shelves. They're not completely filled. I've got about 650 records or so. And I could have certainly had a lot more, but in my opinion, I've always tried to go for two things. One, stuff I'm actually going to listen to, and two, quality over quantity. It's one thing to just buy a ton of records that you may never listen to, and you just want to have it look nice and fill up shelves. That's fine. You know, I certainly get that there are plenty of people that collect without listening, just like people that collect video games without playing them. Uh, I'm sure people that collect comic books don't read every comic book that they, they pick up. Uh, but I do try, for the most part, to listen to every record that I pick up. It doesn't really happen, to be completely honest, but I do try uh, to the best of my ability. So what I've got today is I actually went out to our local record store. We have a wonderful record store here in the area called the Sound Garden, and I've been buying stuff from them for years and years and years. Um, and they had kind of posted that, hey, we got a bunch of vinyl in. I had nothing to do that night. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to go downtown and see what's up. So I picked up a bunch of stuff there. Um, I have a few things in here that were gifts given to me as well. And I figure we kind of just go through it. I got a, I'd say a decent range of genres in here. Um, definitely not all of one thing. I will say that the majority of the stuff I have on vinyl kind of falls into a couple different categories. I collect a lot of 80s pop. Uh, that's kind of my wheelhouse for a lot of the music that I listen to. And I also collect a lot of hardcore and metal. Um, I would say, you know, as much hardcore as I can, a little bit of punk thrown in there as well. A lot of metal, a lot of death metal, a lot of grindcore, stuff like that. Um, I kind of fell into this kind of pit of really extreme music when I was in high school, and I sort of never got out of that. Uh, but I do have pretty wide range in taste. I do find merit in pretty much every kind of music. Um, I also get a lot of jazz. I grew up playing jazz music, so jazz always has a very specific place in my heart, though I'm very, very picky with the jazz that I do get. There's so much of it pressed on vinyl, and a lot of it is just not great, I guess you would say, you know? No jazz today, but some interesting stuff. So let's, uh, I guess let's, uh, let's begin. All right, so the first couple of things were gifts. Uh, I've got a buddy of mine who started getting into vinyl about a year ago, I would say, and he orders a lot. He gets a lot of stuff, and he gets a lot of stuff from Europe, if I remember right. And every once in a while, something just gets jacked up in the mail, and a jacket gets bent or messed up. You know, the vinyl itself, the record itself is fine, it'll play, uh, but the jacket gets screwed up, so he gets a duplicate sent to him, and he'll give me the one with the messed up jacket. And because it's I don't care that the jacket's messed up. So the the first two he gave to me very recently, I actually don't quite know what genre they are. He said they were either synthwave, synthwave or vaporwave. Um, one of the people I have heard of, one I have not. The first one is Eagle-Eyed Tiger Smile for the Camera. 
Let's see if we can see that right there. Uh, I believe he said this was perhaps on the vaporwave side of things. Um, I'm not quite certain. Let's actually see. This is very nice colored vinyl. This actually has MoFi sleeves on the inside. That is good quality stuff. This is a gorgeous red, black, and white with a little bit of orange splatter pattern. Very, very nice. I'm sure that this was quite limited. Typically, uh, you'll get more crazy variants like this, as well as just a plain black. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to listening to this stuff, you know, especially because it was given to me by a friend, and that makes it that makes it important. Even if I don't ultimately end up liking the music, it's still important to me because it was given to me by a friend. The other one is an album by Michael Weber, and I have heard of him. I have not heard this though. This is Emotional Investments. Um, I have not listen to this one, but I have listened to other stuff by him. I'm sorry, I keep looking up. I'm actually filming this on a different camera, so I'm testing it out. And I apologize for the lights. Those are actually the lights for my uh, for my computer. Um, sometimes you get, you know, beggars can't be choosers. I've gotten stuff that's been messed up in the mail and you know, there's there's not really too much you can do about it. This is just plain black, so we don't need to, we don't need to open that. You know what a, uh, you know what a black record looks like, but very cool, very awesome to have as a gift. Yeah, now that I'm seeing it on camera, yeah, that's gotta, that's bad. I'm sure I did not make that any better than it was, but yeah. Oh, well, you know. So the next thing was a gift as well. I actually fully intended on paying for this, but he insisted. Uh, this was actually from several months ago at this point, but it is one of the more recent things that I got. And that is the soundtrack to a video game, um, the video game series that I'm kind of partial to, and that's the Crush series. And we never heard of that. They were released on the Super Famicom. One was on the Genesis, and one was on the Turbo Graphics. And I am familiar with the Turbo Graphics, and they are pinball games of all things. This is the soundtrack to Devil's Crush and Aliens Crush. Uh, there was also Jackie Crush on the Super Famicom, and there was one that was Dragons something. It was not Dragon's Crush, but I believe that was the, the Genesis one. And I do believe that this is a particular colored vinyl. Yes, it is. This is clear, and I am very partial to clear vinyl. Let's be very careful getting that out. But yeah, that is a splatter pink and clear. Absolutely awesome. Um, I have a, you can kind of see it there. It's a red and black swirl uh, slip mat that my dad got me from uh, Amoeba Records out in California. And I really love the way it looks, um, but it can be a big pain to queue up particular tracks when it's clear on top of it, it's a little hard to read. All right, now moving into the stuff that I bought for myself recently. One is an online order. It was kind of the only way to get it. And that is the newest Genghis Tron album, Dream Weapon. This is a band that is super, super important to me. Uh, their original run was when I was in high school. Uh, synthesizer driven, drum machine, just craziness, you know, like screeching vocals, just really inventive, really out there, really weird. And I absolutely loved it. They broke up. They did a couple albums and an EP and some remix stuff. And they just completely disappeared off the face of the earth. Last year, they popped up. They started posting on social media again. And I initially thought, okay, they are going to like repress the original albums, which they did do, but they also said, hey, by the way, we've gotten back together. We're gonna to use a real drummer instead of a drum machine. Our singer is no longer with us, um, but we are going to get a new singer and we're gonna put this album out. And this music is very, very different from what they used to do. This is much kind of more calmer, I would guess. It is not hyperactive. It is not frenetic in any stretch, but I was able to get one of these super duper limited. This is, I'm not sure, quite sure what they're calling this, but it's essentially like sky blue and white uh, mix. And this was limited to 250 copies, if I remember right. I was able to jump right on it when it got announced. Uh, the album actually got delivered a few days before it came out, so I got to listen to it before it hit like streaming and all that stuff. Uh, I listened to it the day I got it on vinyl. I've gone back and I've listened to the album a couple of times since then uh, during the workday on Spotify, and it is, um, it's really, really good. It's very, very different from what they used to do, but I really, really enjoy it. All right, 
here's the stuff I got last weekend. Starting off with Venerology by Merzbo, legendary Japanese noise artist. Uh, you may know him from his collaborations with the band Boris. Uh, he has done a lot of stuff. This guy makes some crazy stuff, uh, harsh noise. This is on absolutely gorgeous purple. Uh, it's coming up a little bit pink on camera, but this is like a dark purple uh, with the white. Um, it is really, really nice. This came out, so the album is from a while ago. This is the reissue that came out from Relapse Records, and this was in, yeah, 2019, so not too long ago. And uh, yeah, I was able to pick this up for a good price. It was under 20 bucks. Uh, I should mention that uh, unless I absolutely have to because it's a band that I enjoy that's coming up out with new music, I typically don't buy new vinyl. I pretty much get everything used. Uh, obviously, if it's a band I love, I'm going to get the album as soon as it comes out. But uh, for the most part, I scour used lots. Uh, but I did pick up a new album that came out last week, I believe it was. And that is Chemtrails Over the Country Club by... Lana Del Rey. I'm a big, big Lana Del Rey fan. Have been since she kind of first hit the scene. Um, I think the first big song I heard of hers was probably Diet Mountain Dew. Um, but yeah, very, very good. Ultra Violence is a fantastic record. I have not gotten a chance to listen to this yet. It's just been a little hectic and I really was digging into the... Um, the Genghis Tron record. I just want to make sure that there's nothing in here I can't show because one of the records... I got, definitely, I will have to blur out, but it should be good. Nothing too risque in there. Kind of a butt up at the top, but, you know, nothing nuts. I do believe this is colored vinyl. I have heard a couple of the singles she released from this album, so I know I'm going to like it. Yeah, that is a very nice, it looks white on camera, but think of it as a very soft, soft yellow. It's actually funny, um, my walls, I'm going to have to do some color correction on this because I think the records are really throwing it off, but my walls look neon yellow right now and I can most certainly guarantee you that I do not have a neon yellow painted room. Another pickup from a band I love, they have a new album coming out soon and that is Zombie. This is 2020, this is their most re uh, recent album. These guys are tremendous. They are a two piece and they are very much in the style of like John Carpenter, uh, the composer you know famous for doing like the soundtrack to halloween uh i saw these guys live they opened for ghost on the pope star tour and it's an actual drummer and then the other gentleman switches between bass guitar and synthesizers um they definitely have some other sounds in there um as well this is just on plain black i really really enjoy them i've heard two songs off the new album and i cannot wait i would also really really like to see them live again uh due to the nature of their setup they're very stationary while they play so they had a very interesting and elaborate light show when i saw them uh next up is 10 steps to success by he who corrupts uh this is a band i listened to quite a bit back in the day i have not listened to them in a while um i would not say that i'm like a huge fan or anything but when you see something by a band that you know you at least enjoy and it is dirt cheap i believe this was under 10 bucks it's kind of hard not to pick it up just plain black vinyl this one i think i'm just gonna have to show the back because the front of this album has a picture of a wiener on it. And that is the newest Anal Nathrock album, Endarkenment. I love this band. They are just everything I want in extreme metal. The singer has these screeching, I mean screeching vocals to the point where they are just completely unintelligible. And I know most people that don't listen to extreme music, they, they can't understand what people are saying when they're screaming. I totally get that. You have to, it's an acquired taste. Uh, but I mean, this guy takes it to a whole other level. You have no idea what's going on. I mean, it sounds like somebody is running razor blades down his vocal cords. Very catchy though, because not only does he have those screeching high screams, he also has an amazing, very operatic uh, singing voice. And this is on colored vinyl. I actually didn't realize it was. I thought I checked. It must've just looked black in my car. This is, are there a wiener on this? I'm gonna make sure. Uh, yeah, it is, but I don't think you're gonna be able to see it really. Um, this, he kind of see it, try and get it in the light, but this is like a very, very dark maroon with some black and white. 
Uh, yeah, you can kind of see a little bit at the top. It looks just kind of like dust smudges. I really liked this album when it came out. This came out last year? Yeah, 2020. And uh, I liked it. It's uh, not their best, but it's far from their worst. Um, I don't really think that they have a bad album in their catalog. I really, really enjoy them. And uh, I'm hoping at some time I get to see them live. Because they, for the longest time, they didn't play live. And now, now they do. They have a backing band. Going back to the 80s pop, this is Count Three and Pray by Berlin. This is the album album that has Take My Breath Away, which was the big song from the movie Top Gun. Uh, the other big song by Berlin, if you ask me, is The Metro. That was kind of their other hit. Great band, very catchy, uh, amazing singer. They're kind of underrated, I think. I don't think they get the credit that they deserve. Uh, when you think of like big, big 80s bands, Berlin's not one that comes to mind. They didn't have a huge career. They were, you don't want to say a one hit wonder because they had more than one hit, but let's say a two or three hit wonder. They were unfortunately kind of a blip on the radar in terms of like big, highly successful 80s pop groups, uh, but one that I've always really enjoyed. And The Metro really is. That is truly a classic 80s song. And then last up, I always try and find weird stuff, oddities, um, just stuff that's kind of like off the beaten path that you don't typically see. This is some Cash Money Records instrumentals, and this is just simply called Cash Money The Instrumentals. This has got uh, Back That Ass Up by Juvenile, uh, Still Fly by Big Timers, Go DJ by Lil Wayne, I Need a Hot Girl by The Hot Boys. Um, it's got a decent amount of stuff. It's a double, double record. It's got four sides. I mean, there's, there's a fair amount of stuff on there. Um, I know my brother-in-law certainly wants to be able to sample this, um, and I don't blame him because, you know, the stuff, I mean, probably on YouTube you could find some of this stuff. I'm sure you could find the instrumental for Back That Ass Up because it was such a big song, but are you really going to get, you know, the instrumental to What Happened to That Boy by Baby? You know, is that going to come really easy to you? Uh, so yeah, anytime I see oddball stuff like this, I try, I try to pick it up. Uh, but yeah, that's everything I grabbed recently. I don't know how often I'll be able to do these. I try to get out as much as I can uh, with the way things are in the world. That ne doesn't necessarily mean people are driving to the record store to trade stuff in. Uh, and like I said, I try not to buy too much new stuff. I mostly focus on the older stuff. So I'm at the whim of when somebody decides to dump their collection or something like that. Also, for a lot of people in this area that do sell their vinyl, it is of a particular genre and that is a particular genre that I collect, which means unfortunately, sometimes I go to the store and then I get there and I'm like, I have it all, you know? And, and I know that's kind of like, a, you know, that's a, a good problem to have, but you know, sometimes it's disappointing. You get really excited to go to the store and, and shop for some vinyl and you're like, ah, I got like 90% of this stuff and the other 10% I'm just really not interested in. Uh, but I will try to do this as often as I can. Same with the, uh, the toy hunting stuff. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Hopefully this will inspire you if you are a vinyl collector as well to get back out there and start going to some used record stores if you have one in your area to pick some stuff up um you know we're we're getting closer to to normalcy it's nice to be able to go back and do those fun things that we used to do again and yeah i will uh, i'll see you soon and uh thanks again for watching